So in this video, we're going to introduce precedence tables. So in this situation, we've got the extension of a house may be broken down into activities A to G. Activities A and B do not depend on any other activities. Both activities C and D can only be started once A has been completed. Activity E cannot be started until activity B has been completed. Activity F cannot be started until activity C and E have been completed. And activity G can only begin once all other activities have been completed. Draw a precedence table to represent this information. Well, clearly, this isn't the best way of representing this information. It's quite long-winded, uh, it's difficult to see all at once, so this, writing it out in sentences, isn't particularly good. So, that's why a precedence table might be required. So, what we're going to have are two columns. In the first column, left-hand side, we're going to have the activity. And in the right-hand side, we're going to have depends on. OK. So let's run this down. So we've got A to G, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. So activities A and B do not depend on any other activities. So I can just put a dash in there for those. A and B don't depend on anything else. Both activities C and D can only be started once A has been completed. So C depends on A and D depends on A. Activity E cannot be started until activity B has been completed. So we can put in B there. And activity F cannot be started until activity C and E have been completed. So we can put C, comma, E there. Then the last bit, activity G, can only begin once all other activities have been completed. Now, you might think, OK, well, I'll just put A, B, C, D, E, and F in there. But we don't need to do that. Really, we want to keep this as uh, nice as possible. So it would be better if I don't have to put all of those in if I don't need to. So are there any that I can discard? Well, I've already got in, um, I've put A in here, but we've already got C and D both depend on A. So there's no point me putting A in here if C or D are both already here, because both of those rely on A. So there's no point in putting A in there. So I can get rid of that. How about B? Well, I've got E here, and E relies on B. So if E was to be there, B would already have to be completed. So there's no point in having B there either. And what about C? Well, F depended on C, and I've got F there, so there's no point having C there either. What about D? Well, D hasn't, uh, no activity has depended on D so far, so I'm definitely going to need D to be there. What about E? Well, F relied on E as well, so I don't need E. So actually, all I need is D and F. So how could I have done that quickly? Well, all I needed to do was look at what I've already got here. So A, B, C and E were already there. D and F were the only ones that weren't. And so I could have just written D and F straight in there without considering the other options. Okay, so that's how I can draw a basic precedence table like that.